All right, so today we're going to be looking at a finished project of mine. I just finished this a couple nights ago, and I'm really thrilled with the outcome. Uh, actually, last night I just finished it. I don't know why I said a couple nights ago. But I just finished it last night, and I'm really thrilled with the outcome. Um, for those of you who follow me on Facebook, you already know what this is. And for those of you who don't, I'll explain it right now. It is a Raspberry Pi running emulation station inside of an NES cartridge with a few extra things thrown in there. Uh, I'll walk you through what you see on the outside, then I'll take it apart and I'll show what I did on the inside. Uh, this isn't the format I normally go with videos. Normally I like to showcase the entire build process and uh, the fun stuff involved with it, but this I just did for the fun of it without recording it because I was able to do it a lot faster without recording it. So uh, yeah, I'll show you what I did on the inside in a second. Up top you'll notice the SD card. I had to have access to the SD card because I feel like it's an important, well, not really an important, uh, benefit, but it's a nice op it's a nice option. I like having the option to swap in and out operating systems at my own leisure, and that gives me really nice access to it. Uh, over here to the left, you'll notice four USB ports protruding from the case. Despite their appearance, they are female USB ports. This is a four-port USB hub I have on the inside, and I hardwired it to the Pi. Uh, I had to have them protruding from the case, so I can have a few a few more inches of extra space on the inside of the cartridge. I uh, plan to add something else later, but not right now. On the side, you'll notice the HDMI output. Playing old school games is really, really cool on an HD TV, and I had to have HD output because I couldn't, I couldn't really settle for the uh, analog output that the Raspberry Pi offers. Plus, audio is taken care of on the HDMI as well. Right below that, you'll notice a little cutout right here. This is a mini USB for power input. I used a mini USB because I have a mini USB breakout board that I've had lying around and it was a lot easier to solder to so I just jumped the Raspberry Pi's positive and negative to it. I'll show you that when we get on the inside. And right in the middle where there should be a screw there is a little on off switch that I added just to turn off the Pi after I do a terminal shutdown so that way it's not drawing power and generating heat or anything. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. It's, it's a nice all-in-one little unit. I have a few consoles on here that I'm emulating right now. NES, SNES, but I don't have any SNES ROMs on here. And uh, N64, but that's not as fluid or smooth as I would like to, so I'm probably not going to emulate N64 ROMs or at all too much. But uh, NES, SNES, and a few other things I'll enjoy emulating on this. Uh, now, there's one thing missing, and that is a mount for it. Uh, I would like to have this just stand like, you know, just like that next to my TV, but it's unrealistic. Once I have the HDMI cord, it's going to end up pulling it around a bit. So I cut this piece of plywood and I stained it just for a little little appeal. And I'm going to end up mounting it kind of like that. So I have a nice mount so it's more appealing to look at. And I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to mount it yet. I was thinking about one of these two angles I have. This one is just the kind of a mini shelving bracket or something I had lying around. And this one was a stand for a pocket oscilloscope that I kind of broke. I didn't break the oscilloscope, I broke the stand that came with it, which I don't really care about the stand because I don't really use it a lot anyways. So I'm probably going to use this one because it's a nice dark color and this part will go inside of the cart like that and I can just mount it a lot easier. So uh, let's open up the NES cartridge and I'll show you what I did to the Raspberry Pi. Um, you will notice that there's no Ethernet port. I use a Wi-Fi dongle. Uh, I had to take off the Ethernet port because it was way too big to fit inside the cartridge. So, uh, yeah, let's take it apart and get on the inside. The NES cartridge has a very, very annoying security screw bit. I bought this, this uh, NES M64 combo bit off Amazon for like $6. I have another one and I think a triangle bit, a tri-wing bit lying around somewhere. So I picked that up because it was necessary for this. Uh, before, I used to make my own screw bits to open up cartridges and N64s. Um, what I did before was I would take a plastic coat hanger, heat up heat up uh, the coat hanger, and then push it into the screw so I can have the form of the screw. And then I would secure the form with uh, super glue so it gives a little more strength. And I would use that. But that was just getting too tiresome. And this was a really cheap bit. So I just bought it. I said, well, pretty much, why not, you know? So let's open up the cart. And then we'll show you the insides. There are three screws on the NES cart, but I took out the middle screw because there's a lot of stuff on the inside. And then it also gave me a nice mounting hole for the little switch. So 
is still there. Now to mount it, I'm probably just going to screw and fly. I'm probably just going to use a little bit of hot glue to secure this thing, this little angle, and I'm probably just going to zip a screw right through that little hole, right through a little wood screw, so I can mount it. So on the end, you see the inside. Uh, here's the Raspberry Pi itself, a little uh, USB breakout board, and a hub over here. So not a, not a lot happening on the inside, but there was a decent amount of work put into it. I'm going to get a better view for you guys right now. Okay, so now we're looking at it a lot better. Uh, like I said before, there really isn't a lot going on on the inside of this, but it is interesting to look at. Now, the hardest part about this entire project was cutting the holes inside the NES card itself to mount everything. I had to cut four rectangles to mount the USB port, a very, very tiny slit to uh, have access to the SD card, and then, of course, a little rectangle for the micro USB, not micro, but the uh, mini USB, and then, of course, the HDMI output. Uh, cutting it was probably the most time-consuming part because I like having very nice-looking, you know, rectangles and stuff for all my mounting because it makes it overall a lot better appealing. Uh, so, yeah, there really isn't a whole lot going on on the inside of this. This is the extra space I needed for an additional circuit that I'm going to be doing later on with the GIP opens. Uh, right over here is the switch that's mounted. Uh, here's the mini USB breakout board. I am just interrupting the ground signal. Um, the red wire goes to the poly fuse on the other side of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's so I don't have to mess around with the micro USB pin out. And I'm just, I ground it in a very dirty way, but it works. I do this quite a bit when I mod stuff that has micro USB. Uh, more than half the time, the metal housing around the micro USB connectors is grounded. So I just soldered that, soldered the ground wire right to it so I can have ground. Uh, pretty dirty way of doing it, but it does work and I have a lot of surface area so that way the wires don't pull and break. Um, that was my fear originally, because I wanted to solder directly to the pins on the micro USB, but I didn't want to lift up any traces, because that would be a nightmare to fix. Uh, so yeah, over here is the four-port USB hub, and I have that directly soldered to one of the USB um, pinouts on the board. I got rid of the two uh, USB ports, and I also got rid of the Ethernet port, so I can have a more slim factor. Uh, I, I kept the headphone jack on, it, mainly for one reason. Um, before... I I was going to desolder. Before I desoldered it, I tested the pins for continuity just to see if there might be like a switch on the inside of it, like some tunnel plugs off for switches to turn on and off stuff. And uh, I tested I tested it for continuity and I got continuity on a few pins. And my guess is, I don't know if I'm right, but my guess is that there's a switch that needs to be broken in order to turn off the HDMI. So I did want to desolder this and have some con like uh, conflictions with the HDMI audio. So I just kept that on, it doesn't get in the way. I, I removed the video output because that kind of got in the way with the switch. And then I trimmed down the GIPO pin, GIP pins. Uh, just a little bit, but I kept them there just enough to solder to, because like I said, I have a circuit board I'm gonna put right here that's gonna use two or three of the GIPO pins, I'm not entirely sure yet. Uh, but now we're gonna move on to mounting this thing, so I wanna give it some stability next to uh, my TV stand, or wherever I decide to put it. Uh, so I want to use this thing, this nice little black angle here, for a few reasons. It's not that big, and it is uh, kind of matches the wood color, so it looks nice. This I was going to use with some hardware, but it's just way too big and clunky, and it's got this weird curve, so it would push the cart a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to use this thing right here. Move out just a little bit. Now, i got to figure out the best way to mount this. So it closes up like this. I want to mount it so this part's on the outside so I can zip that down to the screw. Uh, probably just like that, I would imagine. And then th this piece of metal is flexible too, so if I want to, I can bend it after it's all said and done. So I hollowed out a piece of the inside wall right here where uh, the inside cartridge for the original game would sit. So I'm probably just going to hot glue that in place just like that. Just try to center it as best as I can. And, uh, I have no doubt that this would, this would really adhere well with hot glue. So I'm just going to put a crap load of hot glue on. And then I'm going to push the metal down and try to center it as best as I can.
and then let the hawk lose six, and we should be good. I'll close it back up. Uh, so yeah, I used a few controllers for this. Uh, Xbox 360 controller that I have is wired. I use that for it. But I find the PS2 or uh, PS3 controller rather to be more pleasing with it. Because uh, it connects a lot easier than the Xbox 360 controller would. <clears throat> okay, so that should be good enough. So I'm going to close this guy back up. And then mount it. And we should be done. Very straightforward project. This is probably one of my fastest videos, I would imagine. Now, I had this idea of putting the Raspberry Pi in an NES cart for a while. Like, I, I might have mentioned it earlier in the video. Uh, I wanted to do this for a while, but I never really did. And then recently, I was on Facebook, and I saw someone share a video of a guy who is selling the same thing I made. Uh, I had the idea probably before him, not trying to sound cocky or arrogant, but I had this idea for a long time. Uh, but I never did it before him, but he did it before me. So I was interested in it. I looked at the video, and uh, I didn't really like it. Uh, there was a few reasons why I didn't like it. The number one reason is he made it, and then he's trying to sell it for $150, which I think is insane. And I guess there's a Kickstarter for it, which, again, I think is insane because it's $150. You're paying for a Raspberry Pi inside of an NES cartridge. That's, that's a ridiculous price tag, in my opinion, because Raspberry Pis are probably like, um, $30 to $40, SD cards are a couple bucks, and all the software is free, so you can seriously do this yourself. Um, and he's selling it for $150, and I just think that's insane. Like an insane profit margin, an insane price tag. And um, the one that he has showcased in the video doesn't have all the features mine does. I'm not trying to compare it here, but mine has more features. I have access to the SD card. I have four USB ports instead of two. Um, all the cutouts are a lot neater to look at. I have an on-off button and a power, uh, separate power supply that's not micro USB down at the bottom. Uh, and his just offers the basics, like it has HDMI input, uh, he uses a micro USB to power it, and then he has uh, some, my opinion, very sloppy cutouts for everything, like the USB ports are sloppily cut out, and it just doesn't look all that well. <clears throat> and on top of that, he put everything inside of the cartridge, and there's no mount for it, so there's no stability. That's like my biggest pet peeve is like the HDMI cord itself is going to pull this cart around because it doesn't weigh a lot, so it can't stand on its own. Uh, so the HDMI cart cord is going to pull this around. There's really not a lot of stability there. Um, so I did, I kind of made this in protest to that video because I found it ridiculous that he was selling it for $150. I thought the craftsmanship of his could have been a lot better for the price he's asking. And, uh, he also doesn't have access to the SD card, and he included the USB uh, Ethernet port, which is a nice feature. I'll give him that, but it's also kind of weird how he did it because he never he didn't move anything around externally like I did. Again, I'm not trying to compare it, but in my opinion, it's just a ridiculous price tag for what he's for the work he did do. And uh, I'm not sure if that's including shipping, but I, if it is or isn't, it's still a pretty bad deal. I mean, if you're gonna ask $150 for something, you better, you know, put some work into it. And he really didn't. He just slapped a pie inside of the NES cart and cut some holes where all the uh, ports would be. And he's asking 150 for it. And I can't get over that. Like, it's just insane that he's asking $150 for a $40 Raspberry Pi uh, free software, which he could charge for his labor. All the power to him, he could charge for his labor. And people could buy it. And uh, people could pay for it. Good for him. But per me personally, I would sell this one right here for probably probably ninety dollars. And I think that's an, a really fair price because when I do when I do work like this, even if uh, even if I were to mass produce it, I don't really look for a profit margin other than like I just like looking for the fun within making something. And I had a lot of fun making this. And to me, that's payment enough. As corny as that sounds. Uh, so like I said, I kind of made this just in time as a protest to that video, but also with a few other uh, things backing it. Like, I just wanted to finish up my Raspberry Pi case and put it inside an NES cart to pay homage to the classic games we'll be playing, which is a lot of 8-bit games and probably 16-bit as well and other consoles. Uh, so there's that. There's the hidden meaning. There's one of the hidden meanings behind this, which may kind of sound 
for lack of a better word, bitchy and catty. But that's just my honest views behind it because I think it's ridiculous he's charging $150 for a $40 pie and not a lot of labor put into it. That's just my honest opinion. Anyways, we just got a little distracted there. I'm going to go ahead and mount this to the wooden base and put it next to my TV and hook everything up and we'll play some classic games for a minute. So this is where I choose to keep the NES Pi, right there. Uh, on its nice wooden base, this is the shelf behind my TV. So it's nicely hidden, kind of, but it's still uh, still visible. So it's kind of a conversation starter, I would imagine. Uh, I have it streaming right now to my TV via HDMI. And uh, I'm going to play some Super Mario Bros. Also, I have a PS3 controller hooked up to it. So I'm going to boot up Super Mario Bros. right now. And there's a dog. His name is Taz. He's a sad puppy. Come here, Paul. And there's Goose. Everyone likes Lucy. <laughs> Alright, so let's play Super Mario Bros. Or stare at my puppies. I don't know, she kind of wants attention. She kind of wants attention. Kill the lights real fast. And then turn up the TV so you can hear the audio. Now, my camera I use doesn't really have the greatest mic on it, so I'm going to crank the volume quite a bit. And then we're going to play some Mario. Some Mario Bros. Hope they're not in the way here. Let's boot up Super Mario Bros. So to get the PS3 controller working on the Pi, it actually was kind of tricky, that and the Xbox 360 controller. Uh, but actually, after a while, it became sort of easy. You just push the home button on the PS3 controller and it connects. There was also some uh, drivers I had to install to the Pi to make it work, which was probably the hassle behind it, but worth it. So let's play some Mario on HDTV, as it should be experienced. So as you can see, it works quite well. I love the picture. Now, before when I first tested this out, I actually had the full screen, so I don't know how to get back to that. I'm going to have to mess around with my TV settings to get back to that. But as you can see, it works quite well. The PS3 controller also includes some turbo buttons. Uh, the greatest thing about the PS3 controller is I didn't have to map any buttons. Once I got the drivers installed for it, it just worked without mapping, which I thought was amazing. Uh, and they also included turbo buttons, like triangle is a turbo button, and then square is a turbo button, which I don't really use a lot. It actually confuses me more often than it's useful. Uh, but it's a nice feature, I guess. And one thing I definitely have to do is get uh, Back to the Future ROM and put it onto the uh, Pi. So that would make sense. Let's see if I can beat Bowser. Or die immediately. Anyways, uh, so as you can see, it works. Uh, like I said, it was a fun project. Also, I would like to give everyone a big thanks. I surpassed 300 subscribers a couple weeks ago, and I thought that was amazing. So thank you for subscribing. Um, thank you for watching the videos. I do enjoy making them when I get time to.
I wanna I wanna get my hands on a Raspberry Pi Zero, but I can't find any store that has them online at the moment. Cause I have a few projects with that I would love to do. Uh, so stay tuned. Subscribe if you would like. I'm not gonna twist your arm. And uh, thanks for watching.